Okay, what's going on? Welcome to the Hey Listen Game stream. I'm Zach Hartsman, and we are continuing our playthrough of Valiant Hearts The Great War and learning a little bit about World War One. It's a game that I taught with a couple of years ago when I still did world history. Uh, but I haven't, I don't, I no longer teach world history, so I haven't used it in a while. But I figured it'd be a cool game to play through with you all to see if you can get any ideas in your own classes. We're on day three of this game. I, I think it'll probably take about ten, eight to ten sessions to work through it all. Probably around, eh, maybe seven or eight sessions. So let's go ahead and continue. Destiny brought them together. They had survived the enemy's wrath. This is the core group of main characters. Fire, bombardments, gas attacks. Now, with her father within reach, Anna wasn't going to let him slip away. So Valiant Hearts is a... It's a... It's like stylized as a comic. Um, going over different theaters of World War One, And part of the reason I like the game is because as you can see there is very few like actual spoken dialogue. It's mostly gibberish. Um, so it's pretty accessible to anyone of any language abilities. I teach in a school of 100% immigrant. Oh, I'm not supposed to get caught. I teach in a 100% immigrant population, so because the game is so visual, it helps. Alright, so soldiers go that way, but Anna's a nurse, so they don't want me over there. Which means we gotta hide. Let's see if that, that guy's turning around. Okay. And what's cool about this game is that it's made in collaboration with a couple of uh, World War One like museum organizations. Oh, we got something. What's that? Virgin Mary statue and case. A case containing a statue of the Virgin Mary. Another example of trench art. My father actually has trench art from that uh, my grandfather brought home because he fought in World War Two. Uh, to overcome their boredom, soldiers would set to work transforming anything that came to hand unexploded ammunition empty cartridges and shell debris were all turned into day-to-day -day items and put to more specific use so when i taught with this game whenever we came across an item like that we would actually have students read it out loud to the rest of the class okay we gotta help this dude Little mini game to bandage him up. Hey, Bear Drew, how's it going? Happy Wednesday. How's your day been so far? Ooh, just took a bullet out of this guy. I'm currently drinking another coffee because my dinner, we had some fast food and it conked me out. Crashed on the couch earlier. Same old, same old. Work is work. Currently working on ordering some dim sum nice. A new uh, dumpling place opened in our neighborhood. Uh, we've been ordering from there probably a bit too much. Alright, what do we got? Life and death of the Zeppelin. The Zeppelin was effective at the start of the war in 1915. London suffered over 50 Zeppelin raids before the Royal Naval, Naval Air Service intervened. The craft's weak spot was obviously its hydro hydrogen. Don't use hydrogen. Filled balloon. Hydrogen is lighter than air, hence its value to aviation. However, it is also highly inflammable. And the slightest spark set the craft plummeting spectacularly groundward in ball flames. Of the 92 crafts using during the war, 68 were destroyed. Alright, don't let the soldiers see me. Don't let him see me. I 
I'm gonna need like a crank to put there. We got a letter. Letter from a soldier. Dear Emma, we are on retreat. Our position is untenable. Don't worry, I'm still in good health. We are going to leave Rhymes to the enemy. Rhymes is a beautiful city. I hope all is well at home and you're taking good care of our parents. I hope the prisoners are working properly for you soon. See you soon, Siegfried. Oop, I see. Uh, yo, dog, you go, you go near the fire instead of me. Oh yeah, now you bring me that thing. That's right. That's right. No time to pet the dog. Let's go. Let's go. So I see a couple of new people hopped in the chat. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Zach Hartsman. This is the Hey Listen Game Stream with Geeks Like Us, where I stream every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, different games that I've either taught with, or games that I plan on teaching with, or games that I have curriculum for on heylistengames.org. Um, I teach a lot with video games. I've taught, I taught with this game four years ago now, I think, when I still taught world history, when I was teaching World War I. I now teach U.S. history, so I don't get the opportunity to teach with this game as much anymore, but I do want other people to know about its existence. Alright. This isn't safe. Ooh, what's that? A dart. These darts were dropped onto trenches from Zeppelin's era due to high blast from Their heavy tips were capable of piercing through anything between them and the ground, including helmets. Oh, that's... That's tough. So I gotta throw something at that. Do I have anything? Alright. Let's find something to throw. Anything over here? That looks like just the bonus item. Oh, it's not a bonus item. I can actually... Yep, I can throw it. Cool. I thought that was going to be one of the fact things that come with the game. This game, like, while it is, it teaches a lot about World War One, it really is, like, at heart, it's a, pu it's a puzzle game. Um, and just constantly solving puzzles and puzzles and puzzles and puzzles. Which is why... Oh, I messed that up. Uh, I recommend having a guide handy for if you ever do decide to use this game with your students because sometimes you just get stuck on even simple things. There we go. Alright, now... <laughs> just drop it back on him. There we go, use the dog. This guy's one of the other main characters of the game. We gotta help him out, do our little mini healing minigame. Oh, this one's harder. What's up? One thing I like to talk about with my students is why there's an intentional decision made by the developers of this game to not show anyone's eyes. They're always like covered in hair or covered in shadow or a hat um, or glasses. You never actually see anyone's eyes. Go 
Go get the other boys. This is Freddy and Emil. Freddy's back there, he's cool. Meanwhile, I still got chains on my my legs. Uh oh, now I'm Freddy. I guess I probably send the dog back this way. Go get the dynamite. Don't mind the dog carrying dynamite. Bonk him! There we go. Uh, okay, so now the dog needs to go give Freddy dynamite to stop the blockage. Head in there. Take the dynamite. Good dog. This is what I need by lots of puzzles. Now we're gonna, you know, boom. Probably should have stood further away than that. Well, go now. What you got, doggy? Oh, so that's the handle to the crank, so actually... You take that. You go back. Now we're gonna take that. Head on over here. Stick it in there. Cool. Freddy's got it. Thank you, Freddy. Oh, who we fighting? Who we fighting? We got a wheel. So the wheel makes the propeller go. I set that on fire. Okay, so the dog has got oh he's got dynamite. Okay, I know what to do. So we're gonna push it back, it's gonna set it on fire. Now we're gonna bring it back while it's still on fire. Throw it up. Beautiful. Take a sip of my coffee. Pick up some dynamite for the road. Ooh, what do we got? Facial disfiguration. By 1918, there were 20 million war wounded. All countries included. Roughly 70% of injuries came from shrapnel and only 1% from bayonets. Facial injuries could result in having a jaw, nose, or eyes removed. But progress in surgery saved and patched up many victims of facial disfigurement and amputation of which there were 200,000 post-war. Good doggo, and yikes. Yes, yikes indeed. Makes me happy, grateful that I've never been in war. Also makes me happy and grateful that my grandfather did not su suffer an injury when he was fighting in World War II. Or my other grandfather who served in the Coast Guard. Victory had a bittersweet taste for Anna. Carl, seriously wounded, had been sent to a POW camp. Anna's father had disappeared with Baron von Dorf. 
and Emil yeah, because Carl's technically fighting for Germany in this. Cited for his bravery and right. Because he was deported Emil from uh, his home country, Belgium, I believe. Free. free to go back to the front. So they got separated. Emil is now back to fighting again. February 21st, 1916. When Both of you are serving during Korea and thankfully not the front lines. So my grandfather, and who served in World War II, near Verdun, um, like many others from the heart. he landed in Europe with like a year that and a morning, half left, I believe, in the war. And uh, he actually got a bronze star for bravery for a, a certain mission that him and his... Uh, like unit or company did where they had to cross a certain right. lake at night and they didn't know it was on the other side they were the first people crossing out of this uh, he had a lot of really cool stories he was a machine gunner there was one so he was on the machine gun he had a friend who would like feed the ammunition through through it victor standing on both feet and learning to walk okay so Emil and Freddy are still together this dude wants Freddy. Don't worry, Freddy. See you later, Freddy. Anything over here? Oop, can I go inside there? You want a sock, and then you'll give me the ink. All right, let's go find this dude a sock. I see a disgusting sock. That's gross. Is he just gonna put that sock on himself? It's got flies buzzing around it. He wants a clean sock, okay. Let's go clean the sock somewhere. Oh, I need a feather and I need ink. Okay. Ooh, what do we got? Feeding soldiers at the front. Supplying millions of men at the front with enough food was a logistical nightmare. The diet was mainly composed of bread, rice, soup, and sometimes meat and dried vegetables. Food parcels from home were ambrosia for the troops. British soldiers had a ration of a pint of wine and a third of a pint of rum every day. One of the soldiers' fatigue duties was to go behind the lines of containers to fetch their company's rations. Sometimes food did not reach the front line and the friend could go without food and drink for several days. Okay, so I can't just put my sock in there. I probably have to distract them somehow. Oh, there's a bird up there. What's cool is that there actually is, there are hint, next hints in one minute, 30 seconds, sure. Okay. So when you get stuck, you can sometimes ask for help. All right, all right, all right. I got that sock already. Do I just wait for him to walk away? Turn around, dude. Turn around. There, okay. Turn around again, turn around, turn around. Oh, he put the sock over here. Alright, I got a clean sock. But it's wet. Will he take a wet sock? 
Ooh, now we got a dry sock. All right, let's get. Okay, cool. We got the ink. So we gotta ride home to our daughter. But I need a feather and ink. All right, so let's go find the feather. That's what the pigeon's for. Okay. I need bread for the bird. I'm piecing it together. That's a long line. Can I throw something at the pigeon? Snow? Oh, you know what? I'll probably use the dog to steal the bread. Yeah. Don't mind the dog. Come on, doggy. Thank you. Look at this. Do I gotta walk away? What do I do? Okay, yeah, I put the bread on the plate. Alright, dog, chill, chill, chill. Okay, yeah, I had to get him away. Pigeon's going for the bread. There's the feather. My dearest daughter, I heard from Carl. His condition is stable. He's and still Carl is her husband. I hope to finally get permission to visit him. Thank you for the photo. It means so much to me. Now we're off to battle again. As Freddy. Okay, we gotta avoid the artillery. Get inside. Brazier, a helmet with holes in it filled with coal and wood, and used as a brazier. The item would have afforded some protection from the cold, although the helmets were made of metal. They only offered scant protection from bullets. Oh, damn. Alright, so you just gotta run for it. Not get hit by the artillery shells. Eighteen months later, and over eighteen months of combat, the front barely moved. As each side dug in and tried to claw back any positions, the war which in turn 1915 into the bloodiest year in civilians became hugely affected too. By late 1915, shortfalls in human and food resources began make themselves felt, while ammunition shortages were especially problematic. Oh, oh, oh. Alright, and oh, you don't want to be in a room full of dynamite. Let's get out of here. For anyone who is curious, I did uh, write a blog post about this on my website, Hayless and Gorm Games, about teaching with this game. HaylessGames.org. This doesn't seem safe. Of course, they're sending the black people out first.
What do I do with this thing? I assume I push it onto the thing. My curriculum is available on Hey Listen Games for free. You just need to sign in. Yo, people, get out of the way. Alright, so it's literally not letting me move it. Can I open this? I gotta throw- I gotta blow those things up. Alright, so I need to find something to throw. I see there's pieces of wood up there. Ah, there we go. Get some... get a log. There we go. I'm gonna pick up that log just in case. Oh, run inside. Ooh, what do we got? Letter from a Tunisian soldier. Dear father and dear f family, I am cold. The land we are defending is frozen and covered in snow. The ground is so iced up, it is harder than rock. We cannot dig. The cold is so intense that my hands are burning. I hope everything's fine back in the village, and, I and you're still recovering half of my pay. Tell me if you aren't, Ahmed. I do wonder, and, I and probably, is that these are actual letters. Because um, these are, I believe these are all primary resources. So I do think these are actual letters that people did send home during the war. But I can double check that. Oop, what do we got? Barbed wire. Invented in 1874, barbed wire was already a common feature of trench protection in battle, but with the Great War's onus on trench warfare, it became widespread. Thousands of tons were deposited in no man's land. Both sides sought tools and strategies to overcome barbed wire, such as grappling irons and wire cutters. Intensive bombardment was deemed to be most effective method, and the tactic became widespread. That soldiers putrefying on barbed wire remains one of the enduring images of the war, a powerful symbol of its violence. Yeah, barbed wire is no joke. Alright, so... Do I have a tool for that? I assume I can just, uh, like, drag it up and drop it? I don't think I go backwards. Again, this is why I recommend having a guide handy. What if I get rid of the log? Oh, is the wheel broken? Is that why? I did not mean to pick up the log again. Because I don't think I have any tools. Is there anything over here I missed? Aha, there was. We got a wheel. Okay. This game's... Makes me feel both simultaneously stupid and smart at the same time. Alright, there we go. Nothing like dropping bombs in close proximity. Wikipedia doesn't explicitly say the letters in the game are real letters, but it's implied given that the team listened to first-hand accounts of the war from the team members' families, read letters written by soldiers, and traveled to the trenches in France. Thank you for finding that info, Berju. Alright, we got some, some grenades. All 
Alright, so we're just gonna keep throwing grenades until it hits the bomb. Alright, I see a couple new people watching. So for anyone who doesn't know, my name is Zach Hartsman. This is the Hey Listen Game Stream with Geeks Like Us, where once a week I stream video games that I've taught with in my classes, in my high school classes, or games that I plan on teaching with, or games that I have curriculum for on Hey Listen Games. Right now we're streaming Valiant Hearts The Great War. It's a like adventure puzzle game based on World War One. Uh, with primary resources and nonfiction text embedded into it. I taught with this game four years ago when I taught world history. Oh damn, I need a grenade. Let's go back and get a grenade. Uh, so we're playing through it for probably the next six or so, six or seven weeks. Um, for anyone who might want to try it out themselves. I played it together as a class, although I do know other teachers who have used this game as like an optional text where they've done activities and stations where this the students could choose which text they wanted to use and this was one of the options available. Alright, now we wait, wait. Wait again. Alright, get going. Go, go, go. Oh, we got logs. Okay. Let's get another one. One more, third time's the charm, right? That's how video games work. Yes, it is. Okay, so I don't need to push it, I'm just gonna... Oh, oh! Beautiful. Artillery coming in, okay. I gotta ring the bell up top. Why don't you do it? Why are you making me do it? meal okay what do we got going on cannons oh so we have to destroy the artillery okay with my handy dandy shovel I'm gonna need that right we're done triggered by Germans at dawn of February 21st and the aim of penetrating allied lines the battle eventually lasted 300 days Jesus some key positions changed hands several times before the French finally prevailed. The battle produced the highest concentration of casualties with 600,000 killed over 61 square miles. One death for every 311 square yards. Yeah, World War One was no joke. Um. So he wants me to shoot three different locations. Two different locations. So I need that wheel. That's how I load it. Okay. But I need to find something to. That's where the wheel goes. Alright, what's up here? What do we got? Military decorations. Britain had six war medals, the most issued of which were the British War Medal, Victory Medal, 1914-15 Star, and 1914 Star. 6.6 .6 million British War Medals were issued, 5.7 million 
Victory medal is 2 million stars, 365,000 stars, a combination of the star, victory medal, and war medal is fairly commonplace. Over 2.5 million trios were issued and earned the nickname Pip, Squeak, and Wilfred after the popular cartoon characters in the Daily Mirror, a dog, a penguin, and a rabbit, respectively. There's clearly something there, but I'm just gonna... That's how I'm gonna pick up. Okay, so I'm gonna pick those up at the crane, but let's go see what's over here. What? What do you see? Oh, I got a shovel. Oh, we got keys. Keys are good. Nothing over here? Okay. Uh, I think my game's bugging. Okay, there we go. Give me those back. He was just like walking into the wall nonstop. There is a lock over here. Ooh. Got a little a little handle. Okay, but I still need the other thing. All right, let's go get that. Up there. Something to throw. Aha! Let's go get a grenade. Good dog. Now we're just gonna blow up this tree a little bit. up the branch but it does no damage to the wheel thankfully thank you for your help Lots of puzzles, lots of puzzles. Alright, now what does Emil want? Gotta look for the windmill to the right of the windmill, and then above three trees. Alright, we loaded. That's the windmill, right? There. That's the windmill, right? I'm not going crazy. Yo, dog, what's up? My dog's, like, pawing at me for attention. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, I'm ignoring you. And this is why having a guide nearby could be helpful. Alright, let's... So there's a windmill? Yeah, yeah, I hear you, Freddy. Oh, 
Oh, is it just one location? So it's to the right of the windmill and above three trees. Are those three trees? Alright, where are the three cheese at? Oh, three trees. There we go. I thought I was shooting at two different locations. I had to piece them together. Cannon firing enabled Freddy and his regiment to reach the rear line unharmed. Thank you very much, my friend. The military hierarchy heard of their feats in battle and decided to decorate the two friends for their bravery. Cool. Emil received good news from Anna. Carl was recovering nicely. He was even walking again. Oh, I know. I know. You just want to play. All my dog wants to do is play. The battle for Verdun only grew longer and bloodier. The death toll was staggering. 70,000 per month. Per month. Ugh. Almost one Frenchman and one German every minute. And it went on for 10 months, day and night. In the Geeks, the Foot Guy, you're in the Geeks Like Us Discord. Are you in the Discord? Are, I am, yeah. In the Discord, I'm Hey Listen Games. The squad was sent on a mission to take back Fort Duamont. A strategic point in the journey. Anyone watching, defense. I do recommend joining the Geeks Like Us Discord. A lot of us are there talking about not just video games, but anything and everything geek related. Thank you, Bear Drew, for sharing the Discord link. Alright, am I playing as Emil or as Freddy? Still Emil. Ooh, how do I pronounce that? Daumont, France. This game's like hauntingly beautiful at times. Okay, don't do that because that's apparently a bomb. So there's no bomb in here? Yeah. Will that kill me? Yes, that will kill me. <laughs> bomb there, bomb here, and here. Will that stop? It stopped. Go quick. Oh, be careful. Oh, run away, run away. Let's not get trapped in the poison gas. Hey, dog. Oh, dog's with me now. Freddy's still up there. Alright, wait for this steam to stop. the dog don't mind the dog right, he's gonna distract him so the steam will stop now we keep going meanwhile this guy's like how did dog get down here what do we got for it down down was I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly down was one of the Symbols of Battle of Verdun and was exploited by both camps for propaganda purposes. The Germans seized the fort in February 1916 before it was seized back by the Allies in October 1916 with heavy losses. In the meantime, the fort was damaged by a huge explosion which killed almost 800 Germans inside. Rather than the work of some valiant heart, ah, name of the game, the explosion was caused by a ne neglected stove. The ensuing fire spread to the patrol and ammunition supplies. 
Oh, that's not what I should have done. That was a mistake. Walked right in front of the guy. What? Can I get to the right without him seeing me? No, I cannot. Okay. Am I missing something? Ooh, what do we got here? Concert program, a concert from the program behind the lines where entertainment was laid on for troops as in civilian life theaters and cinemas were set up to boost troops morale. There were also brothels that were regulated to prevent the spread of sexual transmitted diseases. All right, how do I, how do I get past this guy? He's just, he's still going to see me. Hmm. Why doesn't this dude go back to putting stuff in the fire? I am missing something. Hmm. If he turns around, then I can bonk him on the head. No hints. That's not helpful. Hmm. Oh. oh, okay, so that time it worked. Bonk. I don't know what, wh why that worked differently that time. What do we got? Empty wooden chest, and empty wooden chest used as luggage by German soldiers. Suitcases were not widespread, and poor soldiers left for war with their affairs in a knapsack or in wooden crates. Alright, so we're going to move the steam up there into that guy. There we go. I guess I get that dynamite later. Flamethrowers. The Germans were the first to use flamethrowers in an assault on previously held position in July 1915. All the attack was expected. The use of the weapon came as a surprise and caused a large number of troops, a number of ca casualties. Its psychological impact was huge, but British troops soon learned to cope with the slow moving operatives lugging heavy equipment and did not adapt the weapon themselves. Yeah, that's just a way to torture people. Alright, we got this guy. So we're gonna set this guy on fire. Oh, okay. We're gonna put this on the platform. And we're gonna put a little dude.
There we go. Let's bring this back. Kill that guy. Now Freddy's good to go. I don't know if I still do this. I know there's the dynamite somewhere else. I get the dog to that dynamite, you know? Maybe I bring this, can I bring this back? No, I can't, okay. He won't kill the dog, will he? Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he did not burn the dog. Right, the dog's name is Walt. I knew that. Where are you going, dude? Come back, come back, come back. Get over here. Thank you, doggy. Yo, that dog is on fire. Where'd he go? Alright, looks like we got about 10 or 15 more minutes in this stream. This dude's gonna turn around, I'm gonna bonk him on the head. Bonk. Or fireproof doggo. Alright, let's do this door first. German ring, an iron ring bearing the inscription Gold Gab Itch for Eisen, offered in exchange for some precious item as a part of a program to finish the German war effort. Oh, there's a dude above me. I don't have a shovel. Alright, so we're gonna go in here. Oh, we got more lockers. Let's see, let's see what's going on. Nothing. Oh shit, but I didn't go in the other room. There's probably a collectible or something. Okay, well the dog, you're, you're fireproof, so go ahead. No, you don't want to. I'm gonna throw the dynamite through the fire. Blow up the door. Yep. Sorry, dog. Oh, he's with me. 
That's Baron Von Dorf. Oh, it's a boss fight. Dynamite. Beauty. Go now. Turn on that fire. Oh, look at this, look at this. Exactly as planned. I'm running away, you got a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Anything worth looking for up here? No? Why even let me go up here? At least give me a collectible. That's right, just keep blowing more fire at me. Ooh. I gotta go down. Come back down, come back down. And that's how it's done. That's right, keep running away, keep running away. Yo, Emil, where are you? Oh, it's the dad. Oh, he's got a tank. A tank with a flamethrower on it. Help me a meal, and then we're gonna switch to a meal. Oh, I'm all the way back here still. Alright. So hopefully this boss fight doesn't last too long, and then after this is when we'll call it for the evening. Everyone I bonked on the way over. Oh! Let's go in here. Bonk him, bonk him, bonk him. Okay, cool. Get that collectible I probably missed. Yep. Gas stove. A gas stove for warming food or, or heating a room. Not always the most practical heating appliance to use when trying to heat a flamethrower fuel depot. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming, Freddy. I'm coming. Just hold, hold on, hold on. How do I get past those dudes? I'm missing something here. Or in the other... Oh, you know what? The other room had an area that I could dig. Yo, Emil, go faster. It's the slowest run I've seen. Through here.
I'm coming, Freddy. I'm coming. I wanted. Okay, like that, right? Oh, god damn it. Like that, it's gonna blow up the barrels. No? I definitely gotta blow up those barrels. Oh, you know what? Oh, I lost. <laughs> okay. Alright, 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 come on. We don't need the cutscene again. Bring this up. Get the fire going. Unless it, oh, unless it needs to like fall down the ramp. Come on. Yeah, there. Oh, you gotta time it also? Come on, go on, go on. Beautiful. Don't die. Okay, cool. an action movie now. Despite the fort's partial destruction, the Germans held their position. The mission was a failure. So Baron von Dorf escapes again. But we saved the dad, right? And that's the end of chapter two. Cool. There are four chapters in the game. The poppy fields. My darling, war has taken away a very dear friend. Oh, so he thinks Freddy he died. Like a brother to me, and his death affects me much more than I could imagine. In happier news, Carl is safe from the trenches, and his condition improves steadily. I'll go and see him on my next leave. He's still a prisoner of war, though. And what about you? How are you? Are things in Saint Miel any better? Hi, little dog. I know, I know. You just want attention. According to Marie's last letter, this poor dog. His son <laughs> had fallen gravely ill. Carl had come to a decision. This war would never end. He had to escape. All right. And that's where we're going to stop it for the evening. We'll pick up same time next week at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you all for joining me. Once again, this is the Halo Game Stream, where we play games that I've taught with and my classes are planning on teaching with. 
the curriculum for this game, Valiant Hearts of Great War, is available on HeyListenGames.org. Please go check it out. And I'll see you again next week. Thank you all for coming. Thanks, Bear Jew, as always.